Hey, howdy, hey, and welcome to episode 28 of the Daily Decrypt. I am your ever-loving host, Amanda. Today, Bitcoin is $309. Welcome to the roller coaster. Made safe coin is one cent. Supernet is a dollar four. And counterparty is 88 cents. Today's episode is brought to you by Telebit. Bitcoin is a service that I've just found out about, and I don't know if it necessarily is newsworthy in that it had to have been disc- you know, created yesterday or something, but since I look into this stuff for two hours a day, every day, I figure that if I just heard about something, there's a chance that you might just now be hearing about it too. And Bitcoin is one of those. It's a three-man team based in Argentina that aims to help people move their contract making and their justice seeking, should they have to seek justice, to blockchain-based systems. Uh, So they help people create digitally signed contracts and then embed a hash of those contracts into a blockchain. They help people make digital calls for tender. And I had to look up that term today. I didn't know what that was. And they will also, and perhaps most importantly, help people create multi-signature addresses where the arbiter, an arbiter, holds the third key and then the two parties in the contract each hold a key so that in case of a dispute on how things will be funded or purchased, the arbiter has the final say. And this, I think, is promising because I've noticed a shift in recent years to more and more companies choosing private arbitration over government courts. Uh, Government courts have grown increasingly uh, expensive and time consuming. And so I think that Bitcourt uh, is on the right track for capitalizing on this shift toward private arbitration. So I thought I'd just tell you about them. An original art piece by Crypto Graffiti who you may remember made his debut on The Daily Decrypt as a bullfighter on Wall Street. Today he is auctioning off an original piece he made of Mr. Dorian Satoshi Nakamoto. Now you may remember Dorian Satoshi Nakamoto was falsely accused by a writer at Newsweek of being the Satoshi Nakamoto creator of Bitcoin, which got him a lot of probably unwanted attention. And it turns out that Mr. Nakamoto has been suffering from some health problems lately. And so all of the proceeds from this art auction will be given straight to him. The piece is made entirely from destroyed credit cards mounted on wood. And the auction, which ends today, is currently at $4,000 worth of Bitcoin. If you're interested to view the piece, check it out on Bitify, which is the crypto eBay. Purse.io came out with an exciting announcement today, which is that they will be creating a marketplace right within their own site. Now, you may know Purse.io from their ability to offer pretty deep discounts on Amazon products because what they do is they take people who want to buy Bitcoins and they take people who want to spend their Bitcoins and these people swap uh, Amazon wish lists. And so the person who wanted to spend their Bitcoins gets their stuff shipped to them. And then the person who wanted to buy Bitcoins ships that stuff out to them from Amazon and gets the Bitcoins. And Purse has announced that they will be bringing Amazon's shopping ability to within their own website, as well as offering Purse users the opportunity to offer their own products also on this same marketplace. So this may have a lot of promise, as well as continue to offer discounts. The marketplace has not yet been launched, but a software demo has been released. And help a sister out here, I'm I'm seeking a review because I've seen a post on this wallet called UberPay a few different times now. And it claims to be a multi-coin wallet, actually supporting upwards of 25 different cryptos, that has an instant decentralized exchange built into the wallet. And that almost seems too good to be true to me. I've checked out their GitHub page and I cannot seem to find out how this decentralized exchange might work. But then again, I don't read code. So if any of you have tried out the UberPay wallet, which is allegedly available on desktop and Android and iOS, 
or if you are able to decipher what is on the GitHub page. Do help us all out and leave a comment below. There are a couple of new players in the instant centralized exchange market, uh, ones which do not require annoying accounts. You already perhaps know of Shapeshift. Well, there are two competitors in the space. One is metaexchange.info and the other is blocktrades.us. They all function pretty similarly to one another, except they support different coins. Uh, MetaExchange.info supports Ethereum, Bitcoin, NXT, and BitShares, whereas BlockTrades.us supports Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, Peercoin, BitShares, Dash, and Muse. I can report that I have successfully used both Shapeshift and BlockTrades, and I was pleased with the experience, and I've yet to try out MetaExchange, but I probably will. I found two just fun little things today that I just wanted to share quickly. Um, PevPot, it's a simple lottery site which posts the current size of the lottery pot and how much time in the future until the drawing takes place. And so you can just send money there and give them a return address. And then if you win, you win the Bitcoins. And it looks cool because they, uh, they have a proof of how the drawing is fair, so you can click on how is this provably fair, and they show you some fancy block thing, blockchain, mathematical, whatever, that proves how it's fair. Now, personally, I don't gamble with my crypto. I feel like holding crypto is enough of a gamble in itself in these early days of market penetration, but hey, a lot of people do, and I think that's cool. And then the second cutesy thing I found that I wanted to share is this blockchain pen. So a lot of wallets don't give you the little memo space where you can send information along with your transaction. And so blockchain.pen makes it quick and easy if you would like to embed a message or say the hash of a contract or, you know, like, I love you, Amanda B. Johnson something like that. You pay a little bit to the address on the site, you write out what you want to be embedded in the blockchain, and then you buy it and it's done. And this is the Bitcoin blockchain, by the way. And lastly, I found a lecture today that's just been released by the conference Bitcoin Investors. Uh, they had their conference in Vegas like a week and a half ago. And the video is by Daniel Krawitz, and it's called, it's not about the technology, it's about the money. And I found it interesting. Daniel is co-founder of the Nakamoto Institute. And I must say, I do not agree with all of his points. For example, primarily Bitcoin maximalism. Uh, Bitcoin maximalism, in case you don't know, is the theory that currency competition is undesirable. And I have yet to be convinced of Bitcoin maximalism. I inv if you are a Bitcoin maximalist, I invite you in the comments below, or actually in any other kind of maximalist, right? It could be a Dash maximalist, a Dogecoin maximalist, basically any kind of person who thinks that currency competition is shit because you just want to become a billionaire. Well, if you have a good argument for me, I'm eager to hear it. But Daniel makes excellent points in this video about inflation-induced business cycles. Now, not getting too much into the economics-ish of it, Daniel describes how booms and busts in the economy are primarily caused by central banks printing money at unexpected and secret rates, and this causes people to make malinvestments. And so Daniel does a fantastic job of explaining how cryptocurrencies, because they have predictable or non-existent inflation rates, right, in the case of uh, uh, like completely pre-mined proof of stake coins, there is no inflation. All of the currency currently exists. Daniel explains how this, as we move into a crypto future, will help to end the boom and bust cycles that have plagued humanity since the invention of central banks. And so I just think that that's cool. Thanks to today's sponsor, Telebit, which is a new Telegram bot and a standalone Android app.
It acts as a digital assistant, allowing instantaneous wallet creation and balance checks and the setting of price alarms and even the forwarding to different addresses uh, when you reach a certain balance. Say you want to, you say you keep most of your coins in cold storage. Well, you can tell Telebit, hey, when I get 0.25 of a Bitcoin in my wallet, go ahead and kick it to my cold storage. And it'll do that too, because it's cool. And that's your daily decrypt, old buddy. Give this video a thumbs up, or if you're not signed into Google, and I seriously wouldn't blame you if you weren't, uh, just share it with a friend and have a great day. Freedom. 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 We can use some of that, especially where we from.